Good morning, everyone. Here I am, Cry, an expert in electroculture. I also talk a lot about agroecology and electroculture. You can find me in the tour books of energy and paramagnetic basalt, as well as aerial and magnetic secret antennas of electroculture. I have three books published by Perma Future among other books. Today, I am here to present an antenna that I have designed for electroculture with improvements. I will show you how it works and how to install it. I will also share two examples on site with an M flag where you can see some background on the antennas arranged on Sesma. There is a copper tube that increases the potential difference. I will explain all of this to you shortly. The objective is to utilize the natural microcurrents that exist between the air and the earth. There is a long history of electroculture dating back to the century of lights. Many researchers such as Abbe Bertolin, Justin Etienne Christapel, and Jens Knoll have worked on the subject. By creating microcurrents with these antenna systems, we can connect them to plants, crop plots, or trees to interact with plant roots. The goal of the antenna is to reach the highest possible height. It is essential to note that historically, with the geomagnetic at the time, antennas rose between 12 and 20 meters high with the Bertolin base system. The higher the antenna, the more access to high potential differences. On average, for every meter in height, there is a voltage increase of 100 to 120 V. This information can be found in the book Atmosphere, Ocean, and Climate published by Balan. The objective is to maximize height to utilize the potential difference between the ground and the air. During storms, there may be accentuated currents in the ground. I have created a special video on this subject and have written books. There is much more to explore in the videos and books on this topic if you wish to delve deeper. My main goal today was to introduce you to this antenna model and demonstrate what I have developed. The antenna consists of copper strands at the top and sprigs below. Aluminum and copper are very good electrical conductors. Aluminum is the fourth most electrically conductive metal, while copper is in the top three of the most common metals for electrical conductivity. When dealing with milliamps, at very low currents, the difference in electroconductivity between these two metals becomes almost negligible. The reason I chose aluminum and copper is that they combine very well, especially in aeronautics. In TARB, we have an aeronautics hub where airplanes are built using aluminum alloys. These alloys, combining aluminum for lightness and copper for electroconductivity, are essential for interacting with static electricity. Airplanes accumulate a strong static electricity charge while flying, which needs to be safely discharged. Therefore, the alloy of copper and aluminum is preferred. The entire plane needs to have good electrical conductivity, from its nose to the areas that discharge electrons. This concept has inspired me to demonstrate with a multimeter. By testing different parts of the airplane, such as the aluminum, heat sinks, iron pieces, and tubes, I can confirm good electrical continuity. This ensures that the current can pass through these components effectively. I have also added a system of insulation support to my antenna. When I touch the antenna with the tester, there is a good electrical continuity signal. However, when I touch the insulation support attached to the mast, there is no continuity signal. This is because the current that flows from the ground to the air is interrupted by the insulation support. Go through my antenna and don't go. Not in the ma, don't go, don't get lost in the M. That is to say, as you have understood, what are we going to do? We are going to have a system here. You have a bolting system. I'm going to unscrew here, and then I'm going to fix my wire. Driver at that part, so I have a wire stripper. For those who work with electricity, they know this well. So, I'm denuding. Hop, I'm denuding my son, and I go. I can strip a lot more than that. It is just to give you the idea. For you to understand, here I'm going to unscrew. I also need a key for this screw. It's well done. You need a key to undo it. I don't have it, so I'll put it there for you, but I'll give you. It is recommended to put the wire against the copper here, and then we come and squeeze a maximum. I also recommend using electrician's tape. That is to say, once you have secured your cable to the antenna with electrician tape like this, you can go around several times of the system you have set for better further isolation. In inclement weather, although the electrical continuity is present, and therefore the advantage is that the current, as you understood it, will pass well through this cable, 
and it's not going to get lost in the support. Here is what he was doing at the time with the antennas, in particular of Abi Bertolan. We see that we can see that they were using systems of insulation support so that not only the current gets lost in the support, as I just explained to you. Compared to this model, I increase the number of heat sinks. You see, there are four compared to here, there are two. The heat sinks allow for more interaction with the atmosphere and especially with the drops of water. That is to say, when the water falls, it will interact with these parts. Then we know that water may be positively or negatively charged, and so it can also create interactions of differences of potential with my crop plot and microphones running. The heat sinks are parallel to the ground. Why? Well, because you also have to resist the wind. If you put them like this, that will increase the wind grip. So, it's going to be more of a problem during storms. With this design, it makes you think a bit almost like a dragonfly or a bird. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you about the insulation system supports, there, we see that there are three systems. There is one more insulation support, so it's even more resistant. Especially now that it can be removed, you can see the system here. Hop, unscrew, I can remove the holder here. I can also remove this. I'm going to show you why. I have an extra piece here, so I can attach it to my antenna, you see. Now, what am I doing? Hop, I remove this screw, and I simply have a piece that I can fit inside. It just gets stuck in the antenna, and I add. Here is a rod that will cross through my tube. Hop, the rod goes through my tube and comes out well. Spell the song like this. And the nice thing is that in addition, if you want, now I'm living. Well, don't screw it all the way through, otherwise, it'll be too long. But you understand that you have to screw everything as much as possible to never mind what's more. Do you if the rod made it a little longer for you, make an area where you can add even more hands? I'll explain that a bit earlier. Anyway, why this well? Because there. So, if I don't want to make systems with M, but I want instead to put my antenna on a tube like this to increase the potential difference. Therefore, on a copper tube or other, I have a tube with a diameter of 22, which is 2.2 centimeters, 2 centimeters, 2 millimeters by 4 meters from up. You see, I had an antenna electroculture aerial. If we come closer here, look, come and see the strands, of course, that have been opened. Especially, you can see my aluminum tube that is inserted inside the copper tube, which allows to have an antenna that is directly connected to a tube without a system of isolation support. Hop, without a system of support insulation, and there you have it. Understood? So, it fits inside after I did another hole, which means that one time we put it into this copper tube, we can also recalibrate another threaded rod to ensure that it doesn't move, that it resists the storm. That's it for this small improvement on this antenna. So, I also have all the wires, which are pointed out one by one, to increase the peak effect. The peak effect, that is to say, that when we have a point, the electrons go there, accumulate, and exchange zones of electrons with the atmosphere. But it should be seen that all the edges, all the salient angles of the heat sinks, thermal areas are areas where electrons will also accumulate and potentially exchange with the atmosphere. On this model, I added also more M and more M. Why do I do it? I explained it in a video. Long on the subject that I'm going to tell you about. I recommend checking out the link that I'm going to put on here. It is an application that detects terrestrial magnetism. We detect Earth's magnetism, which ranges between 0.33 and 0.77 Gauss. Well, the Earth naturally has a magnetic intensity between 0.33 and 0.77 Gauss. Now, I'm going to approach my Gaussmeter to my antenna or vice versa, 
The Gaussmeter antenna. What is happening is that it increases the magnetic intensity, it skyrockets, showing how the magnets act around the antenna. These magnets are used to create a magnetic field around the antenna and make the ions circulate around it, promoting electron exchanges between the antenna and the ground. I'll explain briefly without going into too much detail, but mainly what I wanted to show you is the evolution of the systems that we are discovering with an antenna system of electroculture. This system has a type of voltaic battery with heat sinks to interact with the rain, the sun, and magnetism. It uses aluminum copper wires for electroconductivity, similar to what is used in airplanes, and a system of insulation support that can be attached to a wooden or concrete support. The small novelty is that this antenna can be transformed into an antenna system that can be directly inserted into a tube by removing the insulation support. We might also be able to insert other blocks with insulation support systems to increase the antenna mass and the electron nature reserve, as seen in Justin Etienne's and Christophe Flo's models. I don't want to make a video that is too long, especially to show a bit of the changes. Of course, the wires need to be opened as you see the antenna above. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, and all the best to you. Thank you and goodbye.